Ahoy sailors! Today, at the Northman Sailing Channel, we invite you to take part in making an anti-twist stay for a Jenica furler using a kit from the NS Furling Gear Company. In the previous videos, we have introduced you to the NS Furlers for Code Zero, Screecher and Drifter Sails, as well as the NS Top Down Furlers for asymmetrical spinnakers and the accessories for them. Please find the links to those videos and where you can purchase the NS Furlers in the description below. Why would you need an anti twist stay? For Code Zero, Screecher and Drifter Sails, it may serve as a rotation axis of the loft having the length which is usually equal to the loft tape length. Very often the torque rope goes through a special pocket stretching along the fore edge of the sail. Sometimes it happens so that you have to fit a sail to a furler for cruising. Very likely a racing sail, which was not initially meant to be rolled. And this is exactly the situation when the NS kit would solve the problem. Or, the soft stake can be the part of a complicated system for handling large asymmetrical spinnakers for downwind, working in a top-down manner. In this case, the torque rope should be shorter than the sail's loft so that the Jenniker could pick up the wind and take the design shape. Let's see what's included in the NS anti-torsion kit. First of all, we have the NS Evo torque cable, having the diameter of 9.5 mm. In the heart of its structure is the inner aramid core, encapsulated with the braided monofilament, which is the key feature to prevent twisting. The inside layers are protected from the sun UV with the outer plain polyester cover. Secondly, we have the NS Alu solid thimble, paired with the NS rope clamps for the appropriate cable diameter. The kit also includes a head shrink tubing of about 25 cm to finish the ends of the cable when it's ready. It would be reasonable to split it in two from the very start. As for the tools, we are going to need the bench vise, a good quality set of hexagon wrenches, perhaps an awl, maybe even an electric drill, and do not forget about the thread locking fluid of the blue color, like Loctite or any other brand. As you know, the thread locker of the red color is not meant to be further disassembled, so all the rigging is always done with a blue Loctite. Besides, you will need a heat gun if you have one to seal the shrink tubing, or you may use a gas jet or a lighter, whichever you prefer. Should you have to adjust the cable length, it is advisable to use a special heat rope cutter, or you may take a wire cable cutter or a hacksaw or just a sharp knife. In any case, except a heat cutter, we recommend, of course, to prepare the cut mark by wrapping it with an insulating or adhesive tape and immediately burn the tip of the rope right after cutting to protect the outer shell from unweaving. Before you start the assembly, it makes sense to accurately measure the distance from the halyard exit on your mast to the tack attachment point on the bolt and also measure the sense loft. To calculate the length of the torque cable, you will have to know the dimensions of all the system components. From below, the drum attachment to the ball spray and the height of the drum. From the top, you'll have to let out some free halyard length. Then measure the attachment of the top swivel to the halyard and the top swivel itself. If you are going to use any additional shackles on the drum or swivel, you should also take them into account. In general, you should give the soft stay a good tension with the halyard fully hoisted. As we have already mentioned, you should leave some halyard length to compensate the stretching of the stay, because the torque cable tends to stretch a bit, especially during several first uses and you will possibly have to adjust its size after a couple of test runs with your spinnaker. So, if I were you, I wouldn't be in a hurry to finally cut off the ends of the cable and seal them with a head shrink tubing. In case, when you have a full cut downwind spinnaker, but it is somewhat small for the boat, which means that the sail's loft is shorter than the distance between the halyard exit on the mast and the tack attachment point, 
your calculation would be based on the sales loft length only. You will have to give it the design shape and that's why your anti-twist rope should be 5-8% to shorter than the loft tape. Now let's go for the trial assembly of the soft stay from one end, while the other end could be finished after taking the actual measurements on your boat. As you can see, first I have completely undone the rope clamps by removing all the fixation screws. The head shrink tubing has already been divided in two parts. I'm going to put it on the top cable right away so that I won't forget to do it later. Next step is to tightly wrap the cable around the thimble. At the same time, we can decide how much rope we are going to let out of the clamp. Consider making all the effort needed so that the clamp would be installed as close to the thimble as possible. For example, Harkin recommends to leave free about 20 cm of the rope end, but I think we shall make it 10, install the clamp and there will still be enough space for hitching tubing to cover the tail. Well, a little bit more. That's it. Now to make the things easier, we are going to use a bench vise to hold the cable and the thimble while we put the clamp on. It's good if you have rubber covers on your bench vise. Unfortunately, I don't have them, that's why I'll have to use some kind of protective spacers. It's time to assemble the clamp. Starting with these main corner screws. As you can see, there are special shoulders on the clamp parts, which show how to connect them properly. Harken, for example, does not specifically recommend to use Loctite on the corner screws. But I think you may do it for extra reliability. Ok, now we are going to place the clamp as close to the thimble as possible. To make this process easier, I think we can split the ends of the rope to the opposite sides. I have to move it a little. It will be more convenient to work with the screws. To prevent the clamp from moving, I decided to fix it the other way at the bench vise. Now it's very secure. Starting to insert the screws and do not forget about the Loctite. It's crucial to tighten up the screws evenly and gradually. It's time to turn the assembly upside down to fix the clamp from the other side. Following our own experience, 
We strongly recommend the owners of multi-hulls to choose the torque rope one size bigger than for mono-hulls. Especially it is important for cold zeros, because the catamarans do not heal and therefore cannot lessen the load when the wind picks up. We also advise to use solid thimbles, double clamps and to leave longer tail on the cable with additional sewing. After all the measurements and trial assembly, you should give the soft stay some time for self-adjustment and stretching. You may want to check the system working for a couple of test runs with the spinnaker. Following that, you may consider final cutting the raw pants and finishing them with a heat shrink tubing. For your convenience, we are introducing the do-it-yourself NS Evertro cable kits for various length and diameters for different sailboat sizes 20 to 28 feet, 26 to 38 feet, 36 to 40 feet and 40 to 45 feet. The NS Alu solid thimbles would fit the NS furlers and any modern furler models with comparatively wide jaw clearance. As for the G30 style furlers, you may use the reinforced thimbles made of stainless steel. Do expand your sailing horizons. Choose the modern systems for sail handling, which are very effective and can facilitate your routine activities on the boat, especially for single-handers. Subscribe to the Northman Sailing channel, like and comment below, hit the notification bell and see you next time!